Hello. What I'm going to do in this tutorial is carry on from what I did yesterday and do some more work on Radiant Quests. Except whereas in my previous tutorial I made a Radiant Quest where you had to kill an NPC, in this tutorial I'm going to create a quest whereby you have to pick up a specific object and bring it to the NPC who gave you the quest. And the object is just going to be placed basically randomly uh, on the map, but I'll sort of run through the whole keywords process again like I did last time. Uh, you don't need to have watched that video to understand this video, but probably what you will need to do is make sure you have some knowledge of uh, creating an NPC and how to do the basic dialogue for that NPC, because I'm going to be reusing the same NPC I made last time, who is called Radchut NPC here. And I'm going to be reusing his Rad Chut NPC base quest for the dialogue which I created in the um, in my last tutorial, as you can see on the screen here. So I'm going to begin by creating my new quest. So I'm going to call this Rad Chut Quest 02 to differentiate it from a previous one. Uh, just going to give it 45 priority. It's not important for this quest. And then I'm going to uncheck all these buttons. Hit OK so we can get access to all the buttons. I always like to save after I do every little stage, just in case. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create our aliases. So we go into the Quest Alias tab, right click, and we're going to hit New Location Alias. And that brings up this uh, Location Alias dialog. So I'm just going to call it Object Location. And I'm going to select uh, Stores Text so that we can use text replacement later. And we're going to do the same as we did in the last tutorial, which is to find a matching location. So as I discussed in my last tutorial, locations will have certain prop sort of properties assigned to them, so they'll have like keywords. So for example, if we were to go to the Federal uh, Supply Stockpile location, this has a few keywords attached. So it has Lock Enc Raiders, which tells the game that this location has the encounter type Raider. It has Lock Set Military, which tells us that this location uses the construction set uh, military, so that it is an army base, essentially. So if we were to look up um, any other army base in the game, maybe Fort Hagen location, we'll see it has the same Lock Set Military. And there are lots of different Lock Set Militaries we can use. So uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to do a Lock Set Military search. So we're going to imagine that our quest is, somebody's asked me, you need to go and get me this uh, military object. So I'm going to right click new in here and I'm going to search location has keyword and the keyword I'm going to put lock set military equals one. So now what that will do is this will fill this with any location which uses the military uh, keyword. But in this instance it isn't enough. Like in the previous tutorial we also have to include a location ref type. And now in the last tutorial I used the boss uh, location ref type. But if we were to look into the location of Fort Hagen, for example, we can see it doesn't actually have any uh, location boss. So we can use the location boss, but I'm going to use the boss container. And now the boss containers are generally the big steamer trunks that you find at every location. So this object is going to be where our quest item is placed. So now I'm going to do right click new. Location has ref type boss container equals 1. Now theoretically we could use location has ref type boss if you want that location's boss to carry your object but I'm going to be using boss container for this example. So what will happen is when this quest starts it will search for any location which has a boss container in it and which has the keyword lock set military. So now what we're going to do is right click new reference alias and we're going to create an alias now to point to that container which we conditioned in the uh, previous alias. So I'm just going to write here container as its name. And we're going to want to go to location alias reference. Click the drop down menu and we'll only see the object location we defined before. And now the ref type, this will pull up all the different ref types. So in this instance we're using boss container. So this will fill with this location's boss container. And finally, we're going to want to think of the item we want to collect. So this could be a literally anything. We could create a, a unique item for this uh, instance, or we could just use any old item. So I think I'm just going to use uh, any old item for this instance. So I'm just going to call this object. So this is the object that we have to collect. 
So we're going to create reference to object. And we'll get a clip this drop down menu. And I think I'm going to do a let's do a military grade circuit board. What are they actually called? Yeah, I'm going to do a military grade circuit board. So we create a military circuit board. Ignore this, because if we're creating an item, this isn't necessary. This is only necessary if we're creating a leveled actor, so we can assess its difficulty. So leave that at easy. And now we're going to change this to in, because if we leave it at at, it'll be created on top of the container. So we want it inside the container. In container. And check this as a quest object. So once the player picks up our military circuit board, they won't be able to um, get rid of it. And we're going to need to OK out of that alias now and just OK out of everything and save. Because until we OK out of the alias, we won't be able to um, attach a script. So I called it Radchuk Questo 2. So now what we're going to need to do is attach, is create some stages. So first of all, I'm going to create a stage to run when the quest first begins. So I'm going to right click new and I'm going to define that as stage 5. Right click new, we're going to include some designer notes so that we can remember what we're doing at each stage. So player, oh, that's great typing, player is told to find the object. And so now we're going to create set objective displayed. 5, and when we hit compile, if we've done this right, it should, well nothing should happen eventually, we should just have compiled the script. Yep, very good. So then we're going to right click and we're going to create a new stage, 10. And so this is going to be when player finds the circuit board, and we're going to set objective complete, completed, sorry, 5, set objective displayed. 10. Compile that. And finally we're going to create a stage for when the quest is completed. 15. So complete quest set objective completed 10 set objective displayed. Oh wait, we don't need to display an objective, what am I talking about? Then we're just going to put stop. So that will stop the quest and allow us to reset it later. And it's important we complete the quest, otherwise it will be stuck permanently in the player's um, it's pit boy, and we obviously don't want that. So I'm going to save again. And now I'm actually going to define the objects to represent 5, 10, and 15. So for quest objectives, I'm going to right click new and I'm going to define objective number 5, which is going to be find the military grade circuit board in and now I'm going to point to the alias we created earlier. So I'm going to go um, alias equals object location. And now we create an objective marker. Make sure I clicked on that. Right click new. And we can select either container or object. It actually doesn't matter since the object is in the container and this, this um, objective will be being got rid of when we reach stage 10. Then we're going to create objective number 10, which we defined earlier, which is just going to be return to the NPC. And what I haven't done yet is create an alias for the NPC, which we need to have done in order to direct the player back to them. So I'm going to right-click new reference alias. And this is one of those instances for what I mentioned at the very beginning, where you need to have some understanding about creating NPCs, because I've already created a unique NPC um, called Radshot NPC, who's going to serve a role of quest giver. So I've already created him, so I've just made a unique actor alias to point at it. And then we're going to want to right-click New and point an objective to the NPC. Now the very last thing we're going to want to do is return to our quest aliases and attach a script to our military-grade circuit board. So we're going to want to add a script here, and we're just going to search for container change like that. So yeah, on container changed to is the script that we want, and we're just going to fill that with 10. So what this means is when that contain when that um, circuit board has its container changed, i.e. when it moves from the object uh, container we defined into the player stage 10, will be set. And so when stage 10 is set, the player is going to be directed back to the NPC. 
Oops. So now the final thing we want to do is set up our dialog. So I already have this dialog quest set up. As I said at the start, you need to have sort of some understanding of that. So we're just going to replicate what we did in my last uh, tutorial, but for a different quest. So I'm going to open this neutral response, and I'm going to put got any work. And obviously that's going to be literally identical, so I'm just going to put in brackets as the prompt fetch, so that I know which one to say when we go in to demonstrate it. Got any work. And I'm going to set this up so that this will only appear when get quest running rad chut quest02 equals zero, so i.e. when this quest hasn't started, or when get stage rad chut quest02 equals five. So the player will be able to ask our NPC, we'll make sure those are both odd, otherwise that'll cause trouble. Um, when our st our stage, our quest either isn't running at all, or when the NPC has first given us this quest, we can ask if they've got any work. So now we're going to set up the NPC's response. I'm going to have him say, yes, I need you to get me a military grade circuit board. And now I want this to only run when get quest running. Radchut base Radchut NPC quest 02 equals zero. So now he will only offer us this quest when the radiant quest isn't running. So we're going to run a fragment now, add property, and add the properties. Now we're going to create a property to point to our quest, which will allow the creation kit to uh, understand what we're talking about. So I'm going to give this property the exact same name as my quest, which was Radchut. Quest02. So that should automatically fill in because we've done that and it has done. So I'm going to put rad chut quest 02.set stage 5. And like I said in the last tutorial, you can attach a default script into it, but if we do that, it'll only run the once and we want it to run every single time we uh, talk to this NPC. So now stage 5 is being set. So I'm going to implement another piece of dialogue to run if a player were to ask, got any work, while st stage 5 is set. So I'm just going to have him say, um, I've already given you a job, get it done. And we're going to set that up to only run when get stage Radchuk Questo 2 equals 5. So obviously eventually the player is going to collect the circuit board, meaning stage 10 is going to be set. So I'm going to create a new dialog saying, I got your circuit board. Wow, that's great spelling there. And then we're going to set this condition, so get stage, radchut npc, radchut quest02, the quest we've been working on, equals 10. I'm just going to copy that for sake of quickness. And we're going to want to create a third topic for the npc to say, to wrap up the quest. Thanks for the circuit board. Okay. And we're going to want to paste the condition we copied earlier, so this will only run when stage equals 10. And again we're going to repeat the process of um, creating a property to point to our quest. Rad chut quest 2. Okay. Rad chut quest 02.set stage uh, no, 15. So 15 was the completion stage that we set before. So we get an OK out of everything. And there's just a couple of little final pieces that I want to do on this Radchut quest. So I want to set up uh, its type as a side quest. So that will determine um, both stat tracking and what kind of music plays. So if you want it to play, you know, an inst the Institute music, you select Institute, but what a steal, you collect, but what a steal. And we'll just give it some XP as well, XP Radiant. And there's one other thing we need to do. We need to make sure the player isn't lumped with this military uh, grade circuit board for the rest of their life. So on stage 15, when they turn it in, we're just going to create another property. And we're going to create a reference alias property. So we're going to create a property which points to the reference alias of the object. So I'm going to call it alias underscore object. 
you can just call it object, but from a style point of view, I like to prefix or prefix all my aliases with alias underscore, just to remind me that I'm working with aliases because they uh, are handled in the script slightly differently to an object reference. So I like to just put that alias underscore, and the creation kit will automatically recognise that you've done that and fill it in. So we're going to type in as well um, game dot get player. So this is how we call the player in a script. Open back close brackets dot remove item alias underscore object dot get ref I think that should be correct we don't need to put a number in because they've only got we should only ever have one at a time so the number isn't necessary so what that will do is that will detect the object reference that this alias points to and remove it from a player compile there we go that's that done hit OK and save that and that should now be ready to be demonstrated. Oh wait there's one more thing we haven't done. We haven't named our quest so this will look a little bit weird without a name. So I'm gonna say get a I was gonna call it um circuit retrieval and then we're gonna do the same thing we did for the objective so alias equals object location so the um, object location being the conditioned alias we set up before and because we set it to use store to store the text we can use this text replacement within the quest okay save and now that's showing up circuit retrieval alias equals object location so I'm now going to go into the creation kit of the game and demonstrate that working right so here's our radiant NPC hello I'm an NPC and we should have the option to say, got any work brackets fetch, which is the one we were working on today. Yes, I need you to get me a military grade circuit board. So we're off to listening post Bravo now. And again, as with the previous one, we can ask him again if he's got any work, but he is going to tell us that he already gave us work. So now we're going to want to go to our quest target, recover the thingy at listening post bravo, all the way over there. So I'm just going to go um, move to QT, um, what does I call it, chut rad, no it was rad chut questo 2, yep there we go. Now I'm skipping myself ahead with my copy of console commands. Oh. So this is the kind of thing a boss container. So we've got any old military grade circuit board which doesn't trigger it, but this one will. There we go. And you could see here, um, I was just doing a little bit of a test, dropping shit on the floor. Um, this military grade circuit board, has, because it's a quest item, it's been moved to misc instead of junk, and we can't bunce it out. So you can see it's different from uh, all these other military grade circuit boards. I'm having all my shit back now. Now I'm just uh, COCing back, and as you can see, we've got Radiant NPC being marked out. Hello, I'm an NPC. And we can, oh, uh, did I forget to put a prompt in for, uh, yeah, I forgot to put a prompt in for I got your circuit board, so that's my fault. And it got removed, and circuit retrieval listening post Bravo has been wrapped up. So let's see what he orders us to do next. Have you got any work? Brackets fetch. Yes, I need you to get me a military grade circuit board. And it should send us to, well, any military, but it might send us to the same one. Oh, good, National Guard Training Yard. So again, it's just all running through exactly as it did before. I may as well, since I've done my console command once. Uh-oh. Here we go, military grade circuit board. We picked it up and returned to the NPC. Exactly the same thing running through. So hopefully that tutorial was uh, useful and clear. I thought this would be a good follow-up from last time. There we go, I thought for a second, because he didn't speak to me then, because he has the default um, voice type, so he's also going to say, yeah, in Garrus's voice. So um, 
that's why he didn't speak to me immediately. So if you give him a unique voice type, that will completely block him from saying any of the default lines. So anyway, hopefully that tutorial was useful. I thought it would be uh, a good, good way to uh, carry on from yesterday's tutorial. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope that was uh, clear and enjoyable. Uh, goodbye.